Hi, I'm Mark from Sounds in Sync. In this video, I'm going to show you the new features of Ediload version 4. Apart from moving the app to 64 bit, the biggest update has been adding the option to import AAF and XML files into the main and compare windows. The advantage of using AAF or XML files over EDLs is that it's generally a lot simpler for picture editors to export these type of files, and a single AAF or XML file can contain all video and audio tracks in a sequence, as well as contain multiple metadata fields per clip. This means Ediload is able to import the data it requires depending on the window the file is loaded into. Loading an AAF or XML file into the main window displays a load settings window. Here I'll demonstrate loading an AAF as it contains a couple of extra menus that aren't shown while loading XMLs. Ediload gives you the choice to import either the video or audio tracks when both are present. Load the video tracks to either create a picture cut track where each clip represents a video clip, a scene change track which contains clips named with the scene descriptions from a PDF shooting script, or conform the location WAV files to match each shot to create a sync sound conform. When more than one video track is available and selected for load, all tracks will be flattened into a single V1 track. Alternatively, load the audio tracks to conform or assemble all channels of the original location WAV files to match the picture editor's audio tracks. The role name and file name menus here are shown for AAF imports only and can normally be set to the default setting of first valid field. Selecting this option will set the role name to the sound role field. If that is empty, it will use the source name field. In the same way, selecting first valid field for file name will set it to the audio file name field. If this is empty, the source file name field is used. In addition, these four AAF fields are loaded into the comment columns 1 to 4, as you'll see shortly. Here we'll click OK and import the audio tracks into Ediload. Now for starters, I just want to remove all the events that don't pertain to a location web file. So I'll just select the sound rolls here, and I'll click Invert and press Delete. So the first thing you'll see here is that the role name column here doesn't have a consistent sound role. So if we look at the source data, uh, we see that the information we require is in comment column 2. So we could just reload the AEF and select the role name to be sourced from the source name field, which is what is populated in this column. Or we can just go to the column transfer window, where you can select comment column 2, and we'll send that to the role name column and click Transfer All Events. So Ediload can now import up to 99 audio tracks. If your list contains more than, say, a dozen, you can display the Track Names column, which is shown here, instead of the Track Selects column, to save scrolling the list horizontally. Also new in version 4 is the Source Frame Count column, which can be useful for docos and productions where the location sound has been recorded using various frame rates. File names now have a dedicated column, and the info column here flags events that have been sourced from a mute or very speed clip, and when loading XMLs, it shows when the clip contains a nested sequence. Now we'll look at how you compare an AEF or XML file when picture changes occur. Create a new project, and then drag and drop either one or more files or the parent folder onto the window. Here we'll load an old and new version XML that's come from Premiere Pro. Confirm the role names and group name as you would while loading EDLs, and click Load. With the list loaded, we see one XML contains five video tracks, while the other three. It is possible to select which tracks to import from the source file using the Load Settings window here. However, we recommend for most projects to leave this set to Video All. Now select which list is the old version and which is the new version and click Compare Lists to create a change list. Use this to reconform a Pro Tools session or you can use it to update the timecodes in a text or Excel file with the new Update Data window. Here we have an edit load change list for a 5 reel feature form that contains the changes from version 1 to version 2. We also have an Excel file containing the ADR cues that were logged to version 1. 
The aim here is to see which of these queues are in the new Pitchy Cut. For the queues that are, we need to update the timecode values in these two columns to match the new picture version and update the cells in the pick version column to the number 2, being the number of the new picture version. Click the Update Data toolbar button to load the Excel file. Set the frame rate count of the timecodes and select the sheet in the Excel file to update. Now here all the ADRQ data is loaded into the Update Data window. Confirm the first row contains header names checkbox here is set correctly. We can use these controls here to create a picture version column if one doesn't already exist in your data. And here we set the column which contains the picture version number and the value we want assigned to the queues that are in the new picture version. Here we can set if we only want to update the timecodes in the timecode only columns or all columns. So the timecode only columns are the ones here that Eddie Load has found which contain just timecodes. We can update a selection of rows or here I'll just click update all rows. Now here we can see 257 of the 266 ADR queues have been updated um, as they are in the new picture version. Scrolling through the list we can see the queues that did not make it into the new cut. So you would use this picture version field in your ADR queuing application to find or sort this data to check what to do with these queues. Now we just save this data to a new Excel file and close this window. A feature that has been requested frequently is to provide an option to remove the sections in an edit that is covered by a reconform. In other words, if you are a dialogue editor on a film and you are reconforming your dialogue tracks to a new picture version, this option allows you to load the new version audio edit list and remove the sections that aren't required, leaving only the events that are needed to fill the holes in the reconform. To demonstrate, here is a change list that has been generated by Eddyload containing the changes for three long film reels. Now as you can see, 90% of the film was reconformed, but we'll need to conform the location audio for the 10% that is missing. Now I'll load the new version audio edit list that could be used to conform the location WAV files. Notice this list contains 1696 events. And here's an overview of what the A1 track looks like, showing the clips in the destination bar here that it's pretty much wall-to-wall -wall dialogue. Now I'll show all tracks and apply the change list by selecting list, remove sections by eddy load change list. Select the eddy load change list and confirm we want to apply it to the current list. So here it's removed 1,370 events and we've gone from 1,696 to 326 events. Now if we just show the A1 track and the destination bar, we see the sections that are required to fill the holes in the reconform. Note that you'd want to check your reconform tracks before doing this to check you don't need any new dialogue from the new audio edit list during the sections that were reconformed. If you do, you could remove these events in the change list before applying it to the new audio edit list. Next, I'm going to show you two new list menu features to manage the track assignments of an audio edit list. So here's a handful of events split over A1 and A2. Imagine you'd like to move a particular set of events to a new track. This might be, say, um, all the OX events, but to demonstrate here, I'll move all events with a role name of day 13 to a new track. To simplify selection, I'll just show the day 13 events, select all events, and then select List, Move Selected Events to New Audio Tracks. I'll just show all roles again, and now we can see all Day 13 events have been moved to A3. With all of the Day 13 events moved, it looks as though the events with an A1 and A2 track assignment can be minimised to use a single track. So rather than using the Ripple Audio Tracks to lowest, which will ripple all of the tracks to lowest, we can select the Ripple Defined Audio Tracks to lowest. Here we select a range of A1 to A2. Now you can see that A1 and A2 track assignments are all on A1, while the Day 13 A3 track assignments have been moved to A2. So this new Ripple Selected Tracks feature allows you to clean a selection of tracks and thereby leaving events with a particular track assignment on their own. 
So the last thing I wanted to show you as part of moving Adelo to 64-bit, the export picture cut track, scene change track, conform reference tracks, and the web file list window spot tracks feature are now exported to an AEF file instead of a Pro Tools session file. So as a bonus, all these edit load exports can now be loaded into any door that can import an AEF. So that concludes the overview of what's new in edit load version 4. For a full list of updates, see the associated blog post on the Sounds and Sync website. For more information, go to the edit load help menu to access the edit load user guide, the edit load file spec PDF that you can give to your picture editor so they know what files edit load requires the sample files that can be used while trialing Ediload, and the Pro Tools export settings window, which shows you how to export a linked AEF or session info as text file from Pro Tools to import the session data into Ediload. If you haven't tried Ediload out for yourself, either on Mac OS or Windows, just head to the download page of the website. Once the app is installed, just run it and click try to activate a trial license.